In this video, I'll show you how I built this epic dwarven foundry. But before we dive in, let me tell you where the unlikely inspiration for this build came from. This is my friend Sigurd, which you might know as Weltenbauer Club. Hi-yo, Weltenbauer Club. A few weeks ago, we got to chatting and we decided to send each other a bit of physical inspiration for an art project. I'll let you find out what I sent him from his video, linked in the description. But for now, let's open up the package he sent me. Precision. Ooh, this looks interesting. Precision. Wait a second. German engineering. It was at that moment that I identified what this was and decided the gloves might be in order. So precise. All right, so Sigurd has decided to send me a piece of German sanitation equipment. It's from a toilet, Narb. Uh, yes, thank you, I, I realize that. In any case, the parts are quite interesting in shape. I could, for instance, just paint it up, dry brush it, and it could serve as a great piece of sci-fi industrial art. But alas, I had bigger plans for it. Don't ask me how my brain works, it's a mystery to me too. But picture this, the industrious dwarves are seeking to harness the geothermal power of a flowing river of magma. They set up their machinery to produce tools, equipment, and weapons to venture further below in search of riches. That sounds pretty epic to me. This diorama also fits into my Cubed Encounter series, which is a set of dioramas that fit wholly within one cubic foot. My previous cubed encounter was that of the Dwarven Outpost, perched on the side of a great fissure, which will also be linked in the description. I've really been enjoying following Boilai Hobby Time series on the Wild West, and I wanted to tie in some of my own builds in a sort of evolving storyline inspired by his series. In any case, after having thoroughly cleaned and sanitized the parts, I set about identifying what would go where. I dug through my own pile of plumbing parts as well as some foam offcuts to see if I could shape the landscape as I went. My process was very fluid at this point, not really knowing where everything would go. As I gained some confidence on the overall look, I started hot gluing some of the foam into place, as well as cutting down some of the tube, which would get used as an exhaust stack later on. My plan was to have the front section of the diorama be encased in flowing lava, so I designed and printed this lava wheel-like structure, which powers the machinery and scoops molten lava into the furnace for geothermal exchange. While I was at it, I designed some other things that would go into the foundry, such as a crucible and the adjoining crane to hold it in place. All the parts that I designed for this build, as well as my other cubed encounters, are going to be linked and available for you to 3D print as well, down in the description. It's over 40 individual SDLs at this point, and I'll be adding more as I go along. You can also gain access to the files I make by joining one of my Patreon tiers. I've been releasing a set of 3D models for patrons every month. Sometimes it's miniatures and sometimes it's terrain. Please check that out if it's something that interests you and you want to support the channel. Everything is scaled down to 1 1 scale for this diorama. But you can scale these up larger and they'll print just fine. The idea for the crucible here is that a crane arm will take it from the furnace and move it to a casting molding area further in. I wanted a sort of mountain cavern landscape on either side of the diorama to give it a sense of epic scale, so I set about bulking out the terrain with more XPS insulation foam. I also carved a notch for the exhaust stack here. At this point, I took some time to plan out where the various features would go, like the live hearth for the blacksmiths to heat their metal bars, and a general area for anvils and workbenches. A lower platform here for more of a storage area and observation vista to assess lava conditions, and leading down to the casting area and towards the loading dock for the train tracks. Oh yeah, we're gonna add a small section of track here in the back with some small tunnels carved in. At this point, a few of my design parts came out of the printer and I set about sorting and inspecting them. These turned out pretty nice. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the video so far as it helps it spread to more people. Thanks. Back on the build, I wanted to include some practical lighting into the lava to give it an extra level of realism. I've had poor luck trying this effect in the past, as the LEDs I used were mostly obscured by the layers of paint that I ended up adding. So I opted to throw a full string of LED fairy lights at the problem this time. At least some of them would end up showing in the end. At this point, I also decided to glue the whole piece down onto the base as well, and we're turning back now. The base is made from a one foot square vinyl tile, by the way. I ended up using two layers sandwiched together for rigidity. 
I added a generous dose of hot glue on top of the hearth to diffuse the lights just enough. Yep, seems to still shine through so far. The rest of the lights got taped down onto the base. I took the time to also carve out a compartment for the battery and switch here. To hold the lights and also diffuse them further, I added lots and lots of hot glue on top. For the ultimate lava effect, I'll be doing a resin pour over these, so the individual lights will likely not show up directly. Now it's time to get messy. Using an Ulfa knife, I start carving in lots of tiny scratches to get the stone texture I'm looking for. Periodic vacuuming is necessary for my sanity here. Let's mix up my favorite recipe, black tar spackle soup. It's just a mixture of black gesso, plaster, and a tiny bit of cellulose insulation fiber. Using a spoon, I give a generous serving to all the rock surfaces and spread it around. And to blend it in further, I used a wet brush and work the details in until it looks closer to what I want. I find that this technique is a surefire way of eliminating any seams between layers of XPS and making the whole piece look as if it was made out of stone. As I was testing out some of the placement for my details, I decided to add some crumbled bits of dried plaster as boulders amongst the lava pool. If you've ever seen rivers of lava on TV, they always look as if they're carrying large chunks of half-molten rock and sediment with them. They're never just smooth flowing clear lava. I took lots of care here not to fully obstruct any LEDs. And while the plaster was drying, I decided to also sub-assemble some of my resin printed details. This train cart, which I found online, got loaded with a bunch of these boxes which I designed. And I also took the time to spray prime the objects to grey for later painting. Not very smart to airbrush tiny bits of plastic around, but hey, lesson learned. Speaking of tiny bits of plastic, I found a whole bunch of Dwarven miniatures on Thingiverse and my mini factory. I'll try and link some of the artists in the description, but I'll probably forget or miss somebody. Sorry in advance. These all got scaled down to 10mm, which you can likely see by the sizes of my enormous thumbs. Alright, it's time to lay some tracks. After marking down their location, I set about carving the tunnels they would lead into, one on each side. Using a bit of super glue to secure these in place for now, I'll have to do another round of black tar soup to blend the tunnels into the rock face. But for now, I'm bulking out the gaps with more XPS foam. I carved out the area for the steps leading up towards the forging area next. To get a clean look and fit the scale, I used medium weight chipboard for each step. This is the bit where the German sanitation equipment gets glued into place as well and I decide that it needs a little something extra to go on top. Perhaps some administrative offices or living quarters for the craft dwarves. Using the same arch style I designed for the dwarven outpost, I layer these into a crude structure with chipboard serving as the floors and ceilings between levels. Scoring and bending a thin strip to serve as a railing adds a really nice touch. While I had the chipboard out, I also cut out a profile to cover each side of the diorama. I find chipboard works really well when painted black at absorbing most light. The slight rough texture on the paper diffuses most of it. Second round of black tar soup coming up. Let's blast through it this time. Don't wanna play a game, start with the moves. Don't wanna meditate, girl, with you it's hard. Starting from the black base coat through the airbrush, I begin to layer on some highlights coming primarily from the side with the lava flow. As the lava will be putting out immense heat and light, I begin tinting this area with reds and orange hues. From the opposite side, and to serve as a complementary tone, I spray a variation of greens, purples, and blue hues in the shadows. This part was super satisfying. Grabbing a makeup brush, I heavily dry brushed a khaki and sienna mix onto the rocks. This picks out all those raised bumps and edges to make for a very realistic rock look. Once I get most of the base coat full of color, I take some extra time to lay out the shape of the lava flowing out of the furnace, as well as the little drain spout going back into the river. This is just made with some wire and more hot glue. To give a secondary glow effect, I add white paint to the casting mold and live hearth, which I then come in and tint with orange and yellow inks. We're almost ready to pour the resin now, and I take some time to seal up all the edges of the diorama with Mod Podge. If any resin leaks under the XPS foam, I don't want it spilling over onto the table. I hot glue some sheets of acrylic into place and begin mixing my two-part epoxy resin. 
He also did a quick test with water to check for leaks, and everything looked good. To tint the resin, I used some red-orange ink. This turned out to be a bit too translucent for my liking, so I went back and added some acrylic orange paint to add more opacity. next step is likely going to add quite a few bubbles, but I decided to go for it anyway. I took more bits of dried black goop plaster and sprinkled them into the curing resin periodically. These will settle at various depths in the resin and form more of that churning molten rock look I was going for. You can see here I did end up having a small little drip of a leak about an hour in, but I quickly hot glued it shut. Nice. About three days later, testing my leftover resin, it looked like it had cured fully. So it was time to see the diorama. Really excited for how the resin came out, but we're not done yet. I wanted the surface of the lava to have some additional levels of detail. So I went and added some ripple effects with Mod Podge and an airbrush. After taking a few more hours and painting up all the little details and miniatures, it was time to also place them onto the diorama. Look at this awesome dwarf carrying an oversized backpack. This is a great free sculpt by Titan Forge Minis. And I also painted up some of these great Dwarven statues by Vitavik Arts. The crane got its chain at this point and the cargo car was glued into place. All the little anvils, boxes, and workbenches did too. To get the new furniture looking a bit more realistic, I also added a watered-down glaze of burnt umber around their bases. The lava also got some progressive highlights to various shades of orange, yellow, and red. And I also came in with some heavy black dry brushing to highlight that charred look. All that was left now was to glue in the miniatures and soak it all in. I wanted to give a huge thanks to Weltenbauer Club for the inspiration for this build, and I strongly urge you to go see what I sent him in the mail and see what crazy art piece he came up with as part of this collaboration. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.